Hello, my name's Rob. I'm part of the clergy team in Portishead. Uh, and welcome as you join us for this week's thought. If, uh, if you know me, then you'll know that uh, I really enjoy cooking. I'm not, not generally a glory cook, I, I enjoy cooking supper. But uh, I do really enjoy making bread. There's something quite, uh, quite magical about bread, how just a few simple ingredients, uh, flour, water, yeast, a bit of salt, can turn from a rather wet, sticky lump into something very special indeed. Uh, when you take bread out of the oven and uh, just leave it on the side, you can hear it cracking. It produces this wonderful smell and then you break it open and something's happened inside that uh, the, the yeast has produced gas which, uh, which creates these, uh, these little spaces and it, it's become something soft and, uh, and lovely. Uh, we kind of lose that when we buy our bread uh, ready sliced and, and wrapped in plastic. It's not quite the same. And, uh, and bread is something foundational to life. Of, of course, we have lots of ways of eating carbohydrate. We can eat rice, we can eat potatoes, we can eat pasta. Um, but long ago, for us in this country, as uh, for um, the people in Israel in Jesus' time, bread was what they ate every day. Uh, and Jesus had something to say about that. I'm going to read a passage from, uh, from John's Gospel. Uh, it's John chapter 6, and uh, just a few verses, verses 48 to 51. It goes like this. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Well, perhaps our first reaction is that's a little weird. Perhaps if we're kind of tuned in to the church and to its life and what happens there, we might think about communion or the Eucharist this place where we each week gather and eat bread and drink wine. But one of the things that's happened to, uh, to the church over the 2,000 years is that we've kind of stopped the bread that we eat at the Eucharist looking like bread. It doesn't look like what we buy from the supermarket. And, well, there are good reasons why that's happened. But I, I, I think the danger is that we've turned this bread that we eat at the Eucharist into some kind of spiritual bread. It's not really bread anymore, not proper bread. It's kind of spiritual bread. It, it, it's, it's, it's a different sort of bread. And, um, and that's a shame because I think it, 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 it dilutes a little bit what Jesus said. The first thing he, he, he talks about is comparing the bread that he is to the manna that the Israelites ate in the wilderness, bread that, that kept them alive when they were in danger of starving to death. But it also um, he's also talking about the kind of ordinary bread that people ate day by day, the bread that they needed to keep them alive. And he says, I'm this kind of bread. I'm bread that keeps you alive. And I'm also bread that is part of, of, of daily life. That in talking about himself as I am the bread from, that comes down from heaven, Jesus is, is holding a, a quite an important tension between saying, yes, I have come down from heaven, but I've inhabited the ordinary stuff of life, the everyday things that we take for granted. Bread. This. This thing that we need to keep us alive. And in saying that, 
Jesus is saying some really important things that, that we need to, to, to really take to heart as we work out what it means to live as followers of Jesus, as, as God's people in the world. That God reveals himself through ordinary stuff. In coming and being present in the bread of communion, he's saying, I'm present every time you sit down and eat. I'm present in the ordinary stuff of life, the stuff that keeps you alive. And, um, and if we're very fortunate, we sometimes or more frequently get to eat bread and other food with other people. And there, in those meals that we share, God is present in Jesus too. And communion reminds us of that, that every time we eat with other people, it's special. But in these words, Jesus also reminds us of the importance of the physical, that God is the creator of the world that we live in and every part of it. And, and he doesn't just love human beings in the kind of way that he's going to kind of extract them from this creation. He says, actually, I love everything that I've made. And he invites, therefore, us to love that too. To, to recognise that these things matter. And so there's a really important invitation on us as human beings to take good care of the world, to recognise that all of creation points us to God because he made it. And so in these days when, well, when creation's groaning and straining and under pressure, when we've extracted so much from the earth that it, it's in danger of overheating so that, well, some people in the world aren't going to have enough to eat. Some people are going to be overwhelmed by rising sea levels. We can't just say that doesn't matter. It, it really does matter. And it grieves God that we've done that. And so we, as God's people, need to work out how we can be a part of making that right and that may mean taking action and saying we've got to do something about this we can't just go on living in the way that we always have because that's what we've always done we've got to recognize the pressure that we're putting on the world the fact that people are starving and say how can we be part of the solution to that and not just part of the problem. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he, he says a lot. That's a part of it. I wonder how we might respond better to that problem.